Mully and Hall, Chicago Sports Radio 670, The Score. And we are delighted to welcome in Ed Howard from Mount Carmel High. He joins us on the Al Pamani Ford Hotline. Al Pamani Ford in Melrose Park. Good morning, Ed. How are you? Good morning, Ed. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing good. Thanks for getting up with us. I'm really excited to uh, to talk to you because, uh, like you, I'm, I grew up on the south side and I'm a big Sox fan. And... Uh, I know that uh, that you have a good relationship with uh, with the team and uh, have followed them and um, and I guess you're uh, you, you also have a, a personal relationship with the guy you're going to eventually replace if everything goes well. Uh, tell us <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, about your senior year. Ed, has it been really difficult for you? I have a, a daughter who's a senior in high school, and you you know you lose your prom, you lose graduation. It's uh, it's a great year. You lose your season. Um, it's supposed to be a great year, but it's been a very difficult one for you. How how are you holding up? Yeah, it's definitely been um, a different year. You know, um, senior year usually brings the prom, the graduation. Um, my senior season, which is usually one of the best seasons, but um, unfortunately, you know, um, all those things got taken away. But um, it's not it's not really anything I can do about it. So you know, I just try to try to uh, move on it. And do what I can do, and that's that's just stay ready for when things open back up, and I can get back out and um, start playing. So um, it's definitely unfortunate, but for the most part, I'm just just standing um, in the present, trying to move on. Ed, congratulations on being the Illinois Gatorade uh, Baseball Player of the Year in the state. And, and I wonder, you know, how do you stay sharp this spring? Because you haven't had your season at Mount Carmel. You do have the draft that's coming up next month. And then certainly the college remains an option for you if, if you want to go that route. Um, how are you staying sharp and, and what uh, what is ahead for you? Right. Um, I, I just I just get in my work pretty much every day. You know, it, it's a daily a daily grind, and um, my trainer, you know, he helped me out a lot. He hooked me up with some uh, some equipment that I could put in my basement. I'm able to go down there and get workouts in every morning with him. And um, the weather's breaking, so I'm able to go outside and take ground balls and throw. And um, I'm always in the cage, just hitting. So uh, just going day by day, just staying ready, you know, um, because I, I know you know things open back up. Uh, things will probably move pretty fast, you know, whether whether that's um, going to play football or going off to college or, or whatever, you know. So I just stay ready for um, for whatever comes. So, um, you know, I'm ready to go. Uh, you know, the, the draft is obviously limited to uh, five rounds this year, which is uh, is difficult. But it's not a concern of yours because you're considered a first-round pick and a pretty high first-round pick. I think the Sox pick 11th. I know you have a relationship with Tim Anderson. Would that be a dream come true if you could come uh, to the to the local team, or are you looking forward to to going wherever you end up? Obviously, you know, honestly, I like the White Sox. You know, I think it'd be a great story. But um, to be honest, I just want to end up going to a team that you know that, that really wants me. You know, um, whatever team wants to give me an opportunity, whatever team you know trusts and likes me the most. I feel like that's the team I want to go to, you know. Um, and if the Sox want to take me, you know, of course I love it. You know, I, always, I grew up watching the White Sox. So I know a lot about that the organization. You know, I went to a lot of games down there. And um, it would definitely be a great story. But for the most part, um, I'm, I'm just worried about going to, to whatever team wants me. How did your relationship with Tim Anderson begin? And, and how, uh, how often have you kept in contact with, with the White Sox shortstop? Yeah, I um the first time I got to meet him like close up and personal was um back in January. It was actually on my birthday. Um we had a little workout, um and, and when we just hit and, and took ground ball together and then for the most part we just we just talked. And uh, we, we we kinda just realized how much we had in common. You know, um he was he was a real cool guy, real down to earth. Um we ended up connecting like on social media, um, ended up exchanging numbers. And we just keep in touch from time to time. You know, I'll shoot him a text every once in a while. You know, he's always he's always um, responded, and um, that's just kind of how we do it. We just we just been keeping in touch ever since. Tell us about uh, the kind of baseball player you are, Ed. When you when you think of your game, um, a lot of people just get real excited about your defense. Uh, you obviously have tons of upside on offense. How how would you describe yourself? Yeah, I think um, I think I do it on both sides of the ball just as well. You know, I get a lot of credit for my defense which is great, but um, I really don't think my bat is, is, is behind at all. You know, uh, I put in a lot of work, and um, I, I see what I'm able to do, so 
I just look forward to going out there and, and just playing and just, just showing both sides of my game. You know, I, I, I feel like I can impact the game defensively and offensively, you know, driving, driving in runs and, and taking away runs. So we have the June 10th draft, and obviously we talk a lot about where the Sox pick and where the Cubs pick, and we make a lot of assumptions, but you did mention college as a possibility. For At one point, I think you were committed to Oklahoma. I'm not sure where that stands, Ed, but when you weigh – your future and you consider your options what would you what has to happen you know in in the draft for you to say okay this is the path that i'm taking and, and how much uh, is college still in the picture yeah college is definitely in the picture you know i, I feel like i'm in a win-win situation you know I, I got the draft that's a great opportunity and then i also have obama which I, I really like a lot so i feel like either way it goes you know um, I, I have a great opportunity ahead of me and then um, as far as, like, a decision, you know, um, depending on, on what happens on draft day, you know, I, I end up talking to my family, you know, my advisors, and that's the decision we'll all come up and make, you know. Um, and if the opportunity is um, is better than, than, than going down to school and playing, then, then that's the decision we we'll have to make. But if not, you know, like I said, I feel like I'm in a one win situation. So um, it, 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 it's going to be a tough decision, but um, for the most part, it's not too much pressure or anything. I'm just, just – um, kind of going day by day and when we get there uh, I'll make a decision Ed you um, you know you're projected as the best shortstop in this draft the guy that is a, a true shortstop someone that uh, that doesn't project to change positions when did you know that you were good enough to play that position and that you were good enough to be kind of uh, on a national scale here um, honestly, I, I think it's, I've known for a long time. You know, I, mm -hmm. I started playing short when I was around seven or eight, and um, I worked real hard at. You know, I, I worked a lot of my footwork, um, my hands. You know, I'm just 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 getting better each and every day. And I always had success defensively um, playing shortstop. You know, I, I think it started back you know in 2014 in the Lulu World Series. You know, going out there at the national scene and and playing shortstop, I feel like I handled that pretty well. And and at that age, it just showed me, you know, that. I, I can play shortstop at a high level. I can play shortstop in in, in front of whoever's watching, you know. Uh, and ever since then, I just always felt like I, I could stay short, you know. I, I really don't don't want to look at any other positions. I, I just just um, worry about shortstop, and I, I stay working hard. And I feel like that's got that's gotten me into the situation I'm in now. Boy, that was a fun summer, wasn't it? At 2014, you were 12 years old, and, and you're yeah. a 12 year old on national television. You're bringing so much joy to so many people in Chicago, Ed. And when you reflect back at that, I mean, wh how wh what did that mean in your life at the time? And 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 how much do you reference that it, to this day? With you know, with your friend, with your peer group, with people that associate you with that team forever. Yeah, that was um, it was a uh, special moment, you know. Um, not too many, not too many twelve-year-olds get to get to go play on that national stage like that. Get to play, you know, on ESPN and maybe seeing things like that. Um, it was definitely an exciting time for me. It's, it's going to be a moment that I'm always going to remember my whole life. You know, um, um, I could talk to people about it all the time. Um, and honestly, at that time, I, we really didn't realize what we were doing. You know, back here in Chicago, but, you know, being out in Williamsport, we were just out there playing. And um, it didn't really hit us until, or hit me at least, until we got back and, and just realized that we have that to like the city and things like that. So um, it definitely was a great time. You know, um, it, it, was, it was a special moment that I'm always going to remember. Why Mount Carmel? What was it about Carmel that drew you there? They, they, you know, there's been some really good players coming out of that program. Was that what uh, what led you to Mount Carmel? Um, honestly, it was my, my connection and, and bond with Coach Eric. You know, um, I would say I knew I was going to Mount Carmel around fifth, sixth grade. Um, I was always up there at, at the summer camps and, and I was just, just talking to her, you know, and um, he liked me a lot and I like I liked being around him. You know, I liked the program. Um, I was around the program a lot. I used to hang out with um, Jerry Houston who, who went to Mount Carmel. Um, he, he's an alum now, but um, he, he, he took me around the program a lot, and I got to see it, see um, what it was about and, and talk to her, you know, build my connection. So I would say around sixth grade, you know, I knew I was going to Mount Carmel. You know, at the last year for opening day 2019 in Major League Baseball, there were 68 African-American players on the rosters. And, and I think that it, the storyline becomes that, you know, kids and African-American young men aren't growing up playing baseball anymore because it's not as popular because the interest is waning and here you are 
at the front of this uh, sport in, in the state of Illinois, in the city of Chicago, with a lot to accomplish. And is that something that is important to you? Do you do you talk about that? Do you think about that? What role will, will that play or that responsibility play as you move forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely do think about it. But um, for the most part, you know, I, I just worry about, you know, working hard and taking care of my business. Um, I, I do feel, feel, feel the need to, like, represent. You know, I mean, it's not a lot of African Americans playing the game, but I, I do think that number's changing. You know, I think it's a lot more, a lot more guys, you know, coming up and, and starting to play the game. And I think that that's credit to a lot of the big leaders in the league right now. You know, guys like Tim Anderson, you know, um, who go out there and represent and show the African Americans to play. You know, guys like for the Cubs, you know, Jason Hayward, he's out there every day and um, just just playing. And I feel like kids, I watch it. And um, I, I feel like, honestly, kids go up to play play basketball, football, because it's marketed more. You know, um, you, you see all these special athletes who, who play basketball and NBA and, and play football, but you really don't see the baseball players. You, you don't see the baseball side of things. So um, I think it's definitely changing up. You know, I, I think Tim Madison has done a great job of, of showing himself and showing what, what he's about, you know, on and off the field. And um, honestly, I, I know it's a lot of great players that's, that's starting to play the game and coming up, you know. So I definitely think it's, it's, it's um, a goal of mine to always represent, you know, following the footsteps of guys like Tim Madison and, and Hayward and, and just, just play professional baseball and represent. Ed, thanks a ton. Really appreciate it. We uh, we wish you the best of luck in, in whatever decision you make. And uh, I, I think it's pretty exciting. You're going to be uh, a very happy man with a lot of options. So God love you. Congratulations, Ed. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. All the best. That's uh, Ed Howard, uh, one of the top uh, prospects in the country, shortstop out of Mount Carmel High. And, and he talked there about uh, being with that Jackie Robinson West team, the the absolute toast of the country, riding high, everything fantastic. And then, uh, obviously, there was a, a local coach from, uh, I think, from Evergreen Park. And there was, uh, you know, an issue about uh, whether or not there was uh, district boundary stuff. And I think Ed was involved in that. Again, there's a lot of stuff that adults were doing. And yeah, that's, we're not really get much into that's that. why. That's why. You know, I, I, well, why even ask him to talk about that? Because, uh, you know, just a, a great young man. You can hear it in his voice. Impressive young man. Got a good head on his shoulders. Got a bright future ahead of him. Has some options. If he doesn't like where he is in the draft, he's got college as, as a possibility. But, uh, yeah, Chicago's very own a, a kid who's making the city uh, proud and, and has a lot uh, ahead of him and, and sounds like somebody who understands that uh, the responsibility that uh, that he feels and, and certainly the, the, the opportunities – that he's going to have to be a, a an example for many others. Uh, so yeah, good good luck to uh, to Ed Howard.